you're watching Dale Night X, X is for exotics. And on this one, we're talking about a topic that if you're a tarantula owner, you know all about this topic and all about all the information in it. So what I'm going to do is just talk about which ones kind of mess with me as far as urticating hairs go with tarantulas and which ones don't give me so much trouble. This is a question that came from me from one of my good buddies, Boxing Boy. have not checked out his channel please head over to boxing boa on youtube check out my buddy's channel i'll put a link in the description below to his channel he has an awesome array of tarantulas his collection is far better than mine right now i'm still rebuilding my collection after i've had to build up my ball python collection to where i wanted it and now that it's at where it's at i'm gonna start building my tarantula collection it's been still ongoing because here and there i keep losing a ball python so i have to add a new ball python so it's been kind of scaling back uh, my tarantula collection rebuilding which i will be re rebuilding in the future I, I love my tarantulas i would never ever get away from my tarantulas outside of snakes tarantula, tarantulas and spiders are like my favorite thing so uh check out boxing ball but this question was for me from him he wanted me to make a video talking about urticating hairs my experience with them is just like any other tarantula keeper. If you are a keeper, you have experienced different reactions depending on the species. No two humans are alike, no two tarantulas are alike. So our, uh, how we interact with each other as far as tarantula and humans go are case by case basis. What affects me won't affect you and vice versa, obviously. I'll start off with this. If you don't know where your urticating hairs are, if you're a beginner and you're checking out this to get some information on urticating hairs, first of all, I recommend a very good book and that's the uh, Complete Tarantula Keeper's Guide. Um, I sent my copy to a uh, boxing boa, actually. So uh, uh, I read that book a thousand times. So uh, it's imprinted in my brain. All that information is in here, so I no longer needed it. So I passed it on to my good buddy, Jay. And I'm sure once he gets all his knowledge, he'll pass it on to somebody else who needs it. It's, it's just, you know, it's, a, it's like the tarantula bible for me. That's what it was like. And I learned all, all that information from there. But there are really good videos out there on YouTube, on social media, so go please check out, get all the information you can on these uh, different types of topics I'm talking about in this particular video. And the first thing I'm going to talk about are the hairs themselves. I won't go into depth with them. Go and do your own research on, because there's so many different types, and uh, I'll put up some different types right here. And right here will kind of show you some different uh what they look like microscopically and that's the most interesting part because they look like just little instant hairs there's a lot going on with those hairs you just can't see them with the naked eye so that is one of the biggest mistakes people make with tarantulas when they first start out is assuming that those hairs aren't as uh aren't as troublesome as they may seem A lot of people get caught up in the fangs and the venom and the webs and all that stuff. That's cool. But the hairs themselves, they can be a nuisance to you if you don't know just what they're capable of doing to you. So let's talk about what they can do to you. For me, the tarantula hairs that give me the most are tend to be more of the big bird eater ones. So like Acanthus curious, their hairs drive me crazy. Pamphobedius, uh, those types. I had a Pamphobedius fortis. That tarantula, as you know, can get can get huge, can get pretty big. So those hairs, some of the hairs on that tarantula's body, she was a full grown adult. I mean, and she had inch, inch and a half, some of them were that long. And if she kicked those hairs and that stuff gets in your skin, you know immediately. What's the signs of knowing what happens once these tarantula hairs get inside of you? Once, once you start feeling itchy your skin starts to feel like it's crawling and you open up the enclosure you, you can feel your skin crawling that's not a coincidence you are being affected by the hairs and in a, in a specific type of way some people are allergic to them and to a degree i kind of felt like i was allergic to acanthus curia hairs and pamphobedias hairs i know now that's not the case i just was getting a little bit too um i was interacting with them a little more than I should have. And we'll talk about that in a second. But I know for a fact, like I have marks on my face, like uh, like dark spots 
right here on my face and you can probably see them uh those are from me having no just completely been a beginner changing out substrate changing out enclosures especially when you have babies and they start to grow you're going to be changing and uh rehousing them and upgrading their enclosures quite often so you're going to be dealing with their substrate a lot often and clean out the enclosures and those enclosures whether you see it or not are just littered with hairs especially with uh, uh new world tarantulas they're just littered with hairs you just can't see them they're stuck everywhere so when you go in there barehanded and you're cleaning them out and you don't wash your hands later on and you're like sitting there half asleep at night and you're rolling like this all over your face and you're you know you're touching it and i noticed i was getting those uh, little bumps on my face that were like pus filled and then they will pop and they will leave a dark spot that will not go away I'm trying different stuff right now that are literally these this was years ago This is like five years or five six years ago when I first started having tarantulas when I was noticing this I know now I've gotten to the point where I've drummed into my head The only time I rub my face is if I know I have been down there and Interacted with them. I'll do that But if I even interact with them for like a second, you know if I open it up where I feed them for days, I will not touch my face because I was so paranoid about those uh, bumps. No, so what happens when, when one of these things get in your skin? From my experience, once it gets into your skin, you start to feel a little itchy and about 24 hours later, I'll notice a little small pus bill bump will rise up. And you can do two things at that point. You can leave it alone or you can do what most people do, like a mosquito bite or something, you can scratch it because it does itch. The moment you start scratching it, it starts to itch and you can literally take your fingertips or you can take tweezers or anything and you can literally pull up your skin just a little bit it's that filled with like pus or whatever to me it looks like pus if you happen to pop that little pus bump the skin will peel away and you will literally see like an open wound like somebody dropped acid on your skin or something like battery i mean it looks like somebody dropped like something that will burn in your skin just a little small layer and if you touch it it stings it burns the open wound will burn and it'll leave a mark and it will scab up and eventually it'll heal up but it will leave a permanent like at least on my skin it leaves like a little permanent mark it's much more, more so on my face like on my hands and everything they don't seem to leave marks there are spots where I, it was like a really big one for my panthavitis fortis that left an actual scar from it because it went so deep but my panthavitis fortis has passed away and i know for a fact that's where it came from because ever since she passed away i haven't had one that deep the only time i ever have them is when i'm messing around with my acanthus curious and here lately has been my brachypalmas my b bomides hairs drive me fucking crazy because as soon as i open them up my skin starts crawling i did a video on uh i did a uh uh what did i do a t spotlight oh it was a tarantula cloud i did a, a basically a brachypalma feature and but at the end of that filming of that video i was just like my skin was crawling. I, I just, it was something from the, the albopilosum, the curly hairs, hairs, which don't bother me at all. But it just, once I open them up and I start, my skin starts crawling, I'm like, it's all you guys' fault. All of you guys are to blame for my skin crawling with tarantula hairs. This fact was an interesting topic for me because it actually gave me an opportunity to provide a little quick story. This came from the Huffington Post. Not that I'm a huge fan of the Huffington Post, but they had a pretty unique little list of facts which all these facts came from and this one reminded me of a story back when I was probably around 15 16 or 17 years old living here in Missouri a lot of back country roads and me and my friends and close family we used to hop in cars like three cars and drive out into like the woods and just see what's out there and we used to do this around Halloween we're bored out of our minds on a Friday night have nothing to fucking do so we go out into this area It's well known to be like you know it's not private land but it's just owned by people who kind of just do not want to be a part of society. And we go out there, and a lot of times we go out during the day, and we've seen some weird shit out there during the day sometimes. We actually saw the, the human remains of a child, um, a skeletal remains of a child in a creek before we saw um, like a seance little uh, field area where the grass was all burnt and it was just birds, dead birds everywhere, Bu brutally decimated all over the place. And one night we went in there and we decided to go at night and we went in there and we were driving around we got out and we went to the same spot we saw those birds at and this time instead of the birds and this is really close to halloween there was about a dozen black cats all dead in a circle a pretty big circle we're talking maybe um the circumference of maybe 20 feet to and maybe 30 40 30 feet tops something like that um just in a circle and you know and it was one of the strangest things we're sitting here we're like what the hell is going on and 
I hadn't thought about that until I saw this fun fact because we ended up getting run out of there. The guys, uh, this is all true story. Uh, there was a couple guys uh, in a truck with big lights on the top of the truck and they were shooting their uh, shotguns just into the air to scare us off the property. And after that, years after that, we used to go back every once in a while and we almost made it like a ritual around Halloween. We would go back and see something and rarely do we see anything to that extent, but um, it was pretty bad. And to see this fact, um, I looked into it and yeah, people do uh, go to animal shelters and actually pick up black cats to sacrifice them around Halloween uh, to rid themselves of bad luck, to um, to do whatever. Um, again, go down the link in the Huffington Post below. I put a link below and it'll go into deeper uh, detail. But a lot of animal shelters will not allow uh, people to adopt black cats around Halloween because of this issue. It's actually a, a really big issue, especially here in the United States. And after digging into it, I, it just reminded me of that uh, incident and those cats that i saw they weren't brutally murdered or anything they were just all dead we couldn't even figure out how they died i mean there wasn't a mark on their body they were just all dead um so it was just a very strange sight and this fun fact you know even though it's not really much fun to be had with it this fact is kind of reminding me of that story and just how fucked up some people can be in this world so that's my experience you know if you're gonna deal with them you know sometimes if i'm dealing with my bracky pelvis i'll just go ahead and put on some gloves the hairs can still go through the gloves. That's not nearly enough protection. You could triple up with them and they'll still find a way through them. They're that fine and uh, irritating. So that's my experience on it. Now, like I said, I recommend if you're gonna if you're going to go into your enclosure and you're gonna deal with these animals, um, and you know by hand without any gloves on, and you're cleaning out substrate and you're gonna rehouse it or you're gonna remodel their enclosure, um, just know whether you like it or not, you have hairs all over you. <laughs> it's just no going around it. When you go to feed them. As soon as you open up the the uh, the lid to your enclosure, just the wind alone, because the the hairs are just they're they're you know weightless. As soon as you lift them up, you can't see them, but they're flying everywhere. You know, and I I and I know that because I've done it enough where I've lifted up the enclosure lid and there's hairs flying all over me. So that's a way to protect yourself if you want to be cautious. And I again, if you have small ones and you're gonna rehouse them a lot more you're going to run into the problem regardless if you like it or not. Most, I don't have a lot of slings. In fact, I don't have any slings in my collection at all right now. All of them are over at least an inch and a half. Um, so I don't have this problem. They're, they're molting very infrequently. Now I'm getting myself prepared because I am going to start rebuilding my collection and I, I love raising slings. You've seen any of my videos in the past. One of the things I'm missing with my tarantula hobby right now, my collection is that I'm not raising anything. I'm kind of just maintaining, I'm raising animals, but not from slings. I like to see them grow from slings to adults and that's what I want to do but like from an inch to up so those are my experiences with urticating hairs they're not my favorite things with tarantulas by far they're like my least favorite thing about them would probably be the hairs because they they take a lot of uh, concentration and making sure that you don't get those things in your skin but if you do you know another good method is you know if I know I'm gonna spend a lot of time with my collection out here once I'm done I make time in my schedule to know that I just go upstairs and take a really good shower and scrub yourself down Wash your hands after you you uh, do anything down it with them. I don't care if it's just you know literally like pouring some, open up the lid a little bit just to pour some water in or something. Wash your hands because it's not only getting on you; it's getting all over your house. It's getting on your dogs, your pets, obviously your your couch, your your children. It's getting everywhere without you knowing it. If you don't, uh, I mean, and it's not a big deal if you don't have like a, if nobody ever reacts to it you would never know really you know if some people have really tough skin it doesn't do anything for them i have very sensitive skin so i have to protect myself and again everybody's different my skin is very sensitive to a lot of different things i i'm allergic to grass for christ's sake so uh i i have to be very careful about that because my skin will break out in like in a second over stuff penetrating it so i'm always like scrubbing down i'm, I'm, I'm a shower now i'm always showering making sure I don't have anything on me, and especially when I come down here with these tarantulas, because like I said, I went through about for like a year where I just kept rubbing my face, you know, because I'm deep in thought, whatever, and then the next day I'm like, oh my, and my face is just, it literally looks like I have like a disease because a couple of bumps will pop up and it's just, it's pus filled. So you gotta scratch them and get them on, then it's like a big open hole and it takes, well, it takes a long time for it to heal, no matter what you put on it. Once that little scab comes off, if you keep scratching it, it'll take forever to heal. And the more you scratch it, the bigger that wound seems to just want to spread and just open up wider. Uh, so it's just the best thing to do really is to leave them alone if they get in your So I hope that uh, kind of gives you an insight of how I deal with them and what I've been through with them. And like I said, it's only a few species that it really bothers me. No, or 
uh, old world species bothers me is mainly new worlds and there are different ways of uh, protecting yourself from them. Everybody's different. Do your research, uh, learn more about these hairs and because each species has a different type. So it's, it's just a lot of them out there and the more you know about them, I don't have time to detail in this video. Maybe maybe a video in the future I'll detail each one um, and see if I can find as much research as possible and make a really detailed urticating hairs. But this one was just really uh, how I deal with them and how they affect me. So I hope this does it for you. Uh, see you guys on the next one. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification button so you don't miss an episode. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Be you and be genuine. See you next time. Take care and be safe.